Have you ever had an experience where you're trying to talk about an accent but you were writing with somebody and you couldn't quite get the right combination of letters to help them understand the sounds that you were talking about? That's exactly what happened to me today. Hi, I'm Dr. Taylor Jones and this is Language Jones. Today I was originally going to make a video about the delectable Jewish treat Mandelbrot but instead I ate my Mandelbrot and then had a conversation about the pronunciation of the word with my father-in-law. And that actually reinforced uh, the usefulness of the international phonetic alphabet that linguists use when talking about sounds and accents, in part because we were having a hard time settling on what the other person meant when we were trying to write with more um, you know, normal transcription. So uh, if I'm trying to represent a sound, you want to know, is, is the standard pronunciation breit or broit or brought. But the problem is, how do you spell brought if you want to ask if something is pronounced brought? How do you make sure that you indicate that the ah is the sound that you mean and not aw or aw or any other variation of that? So this is actually a really tricky problem, but one that linguists solved fairly recently in the grand history of things. People were doing linguistics for a long time, setting up their own systems for, for representing sounds. The problem is, if you say it's, you know, these letters or this letter as in these words, then it doesn't really account for accents. And so if I say, you know, it's the same uh as in, uh, let's say, if I say it's the same o oh as in no or go or oval, then I have to assume that you have the same accent as me. I'm currently in Maryland and lots and lots of people here would say those words no, go, and oval. And uh, same thing in you know, Philadelphia and parts of the Northeast. Uh, at the same time, there's other places where they're going to be pronounced with a different vowel. And this goes for all the different words that you could possibly use when talking about vowel classes. So, um, for instance, if I say the uh sound is in pub, well, there's plenty of places in the UK where people might say a pub. So, that really is actually what an accent is, right? That you pronounce all the, the words with a particular sound and you pronounce that sound differently uh, than someone somewhere else. So the way that you get around this with linguistics is you have the International Phonetic Alphabet, which they started to develop in the 1890s. So it's actually uh, very, very recent if you think about the history of linguistics um, and philology more broadly. So what it does is it gives an individual character for a vocal configuration. And what I mean by that is for consonants, you have place, manner, and voicing. So where your tongue is, what the uh, obstruction of the airflow is, whether it's a complete closure, whether it's you know frication because it's turbulent airflow, and whether your vocal cords are moving. And for vowels, you have an indicator of whether it's high or low, whether it's front or back, and whether your lips are rounded or not. And these three parameters for consonants and three parameters for vowels, each one of those gets its own individual character. So when we talk about sounds, if I want to say, oh, it's pronounced, you know, breit, as in Mandelbrot, then I can write that down, or Mandelbrot, if you like the, the R, I can write that down and I can notate the differences between those without having to say, you know, A is a name and hope that you pronounce name the same way that I do or you know, use the French R or the guttural R. It's something where it's very, very clear when you look at it exactly what the sounds are. And then you can reproduce the sounds um, that somebody else made and, and even make sounds in languages that you don't necessarily uh, already know, but you can be fairly confident that you're actually talking about the actual sounds that people use. So one thing that linguists are aware of is that writing is effectively a technology. And some writing systems, you know, retain a history of a language. Um, other writing systems really try and capture the sounds as they're spoken, but it's, you know, spoken by a particular group of people in a particular place and a particular time. So the real beauty of the International Phonetic Alphabet is that we can talk about the sounds that people are actually making rather than using a writing system that effectively assumes a particular accent and kind of falls apart when you don't have that accent. So that was today's little language bite. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions about anything in any language, please leave a comment below or you know, just uh, let me know what you thought.